she, her. So without further ado, I'm going to be talking to you guys today about what doctors can learn at the bar. I will be a good doctor because I have spent a lot of time at bars. <laughs> Let me explain what I mean though. July 2020 was my first ever day of medical school. I know we all remember the feeling of excitement, like we were crossing through the figurative gates that had been separating us from the rest of our lives. But as my experience inevitably transitioned from shiny and new to repetitive and exhausting, I couldn't shake this feeling of being a fish out of water. I left my low income, humble, all too familiar with struggle community behind and entered an environment inherently privileged. Even though I felt confident speaking up in class and I knew I was a strong and a capable leader, I still felt like I didn't belong. It was like there was a glass wall separating me from everyone else, but only I could see it. And then we have our first OSCE. Waiting in line with my peers, I was anxiously going over OPQRST and old cards in my head, making sure I had four pens just in case the first three run out, you know. <laughs> And but as soon as I opened the door separating me from the SP, all of that anxiety melted away and all that existed in the world was me and my patient. It felt like I was transported back to a time in my previous life of serving and bartending. Hi friends, my name's Samantha, I'm gonna be taking care of y'all tonight. What are we drinking? I've done it a million times before. You know, talking to strangers and, and making them feel like family even though I couldn't possibly have less in common with them. And then suddenly, I realized how my experiences that make me different are the ones that make me the best doctor and the ones that make me belong the most. The OSCE was comfortable for me because that was my element. And ever since then, I'm constantly noticing little ways in which my two worlds are interconnected and lessons that one could extend to the other. From yelling her to express acknowledgement, saying water so nobody runs into you with a full tray, the restaurant industry has its own culture, and I'm sure many of you are also familiar with it. One of the most important aspects of this culture is the way people support each other. The industry is comprised of people from all walks of life, high, low, and lower. And no matter what someone is going through, the industry family is there for them, to pick them up off the floor, to celebrate their progress, to cover their tables while they handle their business out back. <laughs> it's no man left behind. Come as you are, and as long as you do all your side work, well, you've got yourself a team. We all understand the struggle, and we know it's not our job to shame you, but rather to get down in the dirt and meet you where you are. Can you imagine if medicine was like this? In the age of COVID, we've seen that the general public doesn't feel heard by us. If we met the patient where they were, maybe they would feel truly heard and comfortable. Even if we can't relate on a personal level, getting down in the dirt with someone and showing them that they are accepted exactly as they are is the most powerful thing. And if we extend, extended this same acceptance to our peers, maybe the fear of being an imposter would be just a little less suffocating. Another aspect of the restaurant industry that is <laughs> Uh, integral to it is that uh, disrespect is kind of a part of the job description. I couldn't tell you how many times I was screamed at, harassed, or treated like the scum beneath a powerful person's shoes. But when you're in a job like that, you quickly lose the impulse to impress upon others how actually smart and important you are because you realize that there are more important things to life than being important. And your value doesn't depend on what job you have. For many of us, we think we derive our work from our careers. We introduce ourselves by stating our OMS year and leadership position. We have uh, OMS X in our Instagram bios and white coats on our Facebooks. We spend 90% of our time focused on being enough and doing enough and structuring our lives to work around the things that medicine demands of us. But what would happen if we started contextualizing our worth as being separate from the prestige of our jobs or what other people think of us, or our productivity. Maybe the security of not feeling like we have to prove ourselves would transform our ability to do what we do best, being human and serving others. Well, I could talk for hours about all the things that uh, the restaurant industry could teach us physicians and physician trainees. The last one I want to mention is especially for us, and that's to always take your smoke break. Yes, you heard me, take your smoke break. Well, just a regular
regular break is fine too. Please don't smoke. <laughs> Hearing this advice as a 16 year old definitely put a meme worthy look of shock across my face. Smoking is bad for you. But what my coworkers were telling me wasn't to actually go smoke, but rather it's okay to slow down. I know that's such a loaded concept when speaking to a room full of med student uh, government presidents and vice presidents, pursuing a career that incentivizes being a workaholic and conditions you to believe you are not allowed to rest. I didn't start taking fake smoke breaks until I was probably 18, two whole years into my restaurant industry career, but there was something so empowering about those five minutes. I would just go back and sit on the asphalt and just breathe. The world will keep spinning without my participation. As leaders in medicine, we don't do this enough. We're so afraid of being weak and afraid of not being cut out for medicine that we tell our friends that they're allowed to take a break and they deserve the night off. And then we push ourselves past our breaking point in secret. I finally started taking breaks because I had spent years having my coworkers show me it's okay. They led by example until eventually I followed. So when we treat ourselves this way in medicine, what message are we actually sending? We've all seen countless question stems uh, painting a picture by emphasizing a patient's um, qualities, right? The, the patient took an overseas flight on OCPs, or the, the patient works in a pet store with parakeets. You know the drill, right? <laughs> but when I think about a bartender, I think about how they taught me how to talk to absolutely anyone. That your worth isn't dependent on your circumstances. That you are allowed to take a break and that break makes you better at your job, and that getting down in the dirt with someone and radically accepting them as they are is the most powerful thing you can do to help them. So if you haven't spent too much time at bars like I have, let me be the bartender that I told you. It's okay to rest, you are enough, and I accept every one of you exactly as you are. We are the turning point, and by taking lessons in positionship from bartenders, we are the force of the future. I'll see you all down in the dirt.